Bob Talk Radio. Welcome, world. Welcome once again to Tuesday Talk with Key West Lou. I am your host, Louis Patron. Well, another exciting week. None of them are boring. Not with Donald Trump as president. Uh, so much going on, so many not so nice things. Uh, I hate all this news. This is not quality news. This is not good stuff because I think most of what is happening is hurtful to our country and to our people. Let me start tonight uh, with morality. Morality. I believe that morality in our country is leaving us or has left us. Uh, Let's take Trump, for example. The man lies. He lies constantly. He lies almost every day. Uh, I sometimes think he doesn't know what the truth is. It may be a mental thing. He doesn't remember from one day to another. I don't know. But he lies. And you've got to remember, there is there are Ten Commandments. One of them says, thou shalt not lie. But he lies. Then there's sex. Uh, we haven't had so much news about sex. I think this is the most we've had in my lifetime, which is coming down in the last couple of months. Uh, bing, bang, boom. It's, it's, it's pouring rain. It's all sex. Well, Donald Trump has his own sex problems. And we don't seem to deal with them now. I I don't know how we deal with them. This country elected Donald Trump when he had all of these purported uh, sex involvements uh, during his lifetime. I quite frankly believe that most, if not all, are true. What the hell? The man had a lot of money. He was a playboy. Uh, He's out there. He's, He's swinging. He's having a very good time. But he got away with it. He got away with it. He became president of the United States. That shows something's missing in the moral fiber of the people who voted for him. Got to say it that way. Uh, Then we've got more up there in Alabama. The guy's a pedophile. He also likes teenage girls. Uh, And now the president comes out yesterday and supports him for re-election. Uh, and so is the, the senators uh, and the Congress of the United States, the Republican side. Why? Because another Republican seat, preserving a Republican seat, is more important than the morals involved in the situation. Okay to elect a pedophile to the United States Senate, the Republicans need his vote. Something's wrong. There has to be a time when you stand up and say, need his vote, but can't do that. You've got to draw the line. We don't draw the line anymore. And especially our elected representatives. I'm not saying the people are bad. I think our elected representatives are bad. Uh, Then there's sex in the workplace. Now, we've always had sex in the workplace. Question is, is it more today than it was, you know, 30, 40 years ago or yesterday. Uh, I know it probably was heavy in the 60s and 70s, but it was on a consensual basis, if I may say it that way. But in recent years, uh, there seems to be so much, and that shows a lack of moral fiber. The thing that bothers me the most, and it's been bothering me for 40 years, uh, and it's an item which I believe shows that uh, morality uh is diminishing. It's just going downhill. And that's the lack of people going to church. People don't go to church like they used to. I can remember when going to church, you had to stand in the back or in the aisle sometime. Uh, I'm a Catholic. I'm a fallen away Catholic. Uh, but I used to go to church at one time. Believe it or not, I was an altar boy. Uh, people don't go to church anymore. Catholic church, I know definitely. There came a time 20 years ago where we had to close churches, couldn't afford to support them all, and two or three parishes were combined into one. And it's the same, too, with Protestant churches. I don't know if they close and combine, but the churches aren't full today. People don't go to church. This does not mean people are not Christians. This does not mean people are not moral. Uh, This just means for some reason they've decided 
the church is either doing them no good or they don't want to participate with them. I have my personal reasons. Other people have theirs. But whatever's happening, it shows that the moral level of our country is receding. It's going further and further downhill. Uh, it's got to be recaptured. It can be recaptured. But, boy, it's going to take a lot of work, especially. And you got to start with the horrors in Washington. Moving on here now. I'm going to talk about something that's got to scare the hell out of you right now and bother you tremendously. And if it doesn't bother you, something is wrong with you. It's called robocalls. And here's what's happening, my friends, with robocalls. People are getting telephone calls. They're robocalls. And these are concerning derogatory Trump posts. And there's someone at the other end of the line. It's a robocall, but it sounds like a for real person, etc. And it says, and I quote, we've been monitoring some of your posts. This is, I quote, we have been monitoring some of your posts. It seems you've been making some rather negative comments about President Trump. Trump. Is that correct? Hey. Now, <laughs> uh, they want you to stop making negative and derogatory posts about the president. And they say, and I quote in these uh, telephone calls, these robocalls, you've been warned. You like that? You've been warned. We'll be keeping an eye on you. Man, it's creepy, scary. This is in the United States. This is on behalf of the president of the United States. The oracle of everything purportedly that is wise and good. The man is trash. Anyhow, but he's got supporters who love him. And these robocalls have been going on since July in the United States and Canada. The source of them is are the citizens for Trump. It's a prank outfit. The Citizens for Trump is a prank outfit. It's a prank service. It's owned by Own Age Pranks. Own Age Pranks. They place the calls. The calls are all recorded, by the way. Uh, and the people who they call, like you and me, if they call you and me, uh, can respond publicly if they choose. Uh, now, voice the voice who is identified, it's a person, it's a robocall, but they identify the person at the other end. He's Russell from Citizens for the Trump Foundation. He identifies himself as Russell from the Trump Foundation. Uh, and what they do again, the robot answers and says, you've been warned, you better watch yourself. We do not like your negative posts. This is America. They're telling them this is America. Now, if I got one of these things, and I, I would expect to get one, uh, I'm negative about the president, I'd report it immediately to the FBI. This is bullshit. In this country, we've got a cause like this threatening us. and It's just wrong, wrong, wrong. But this is what's going on. Michael Flynn pled guilty to... Uh, lying to the FBI, which, you know, puts him uh, under the cloak of the Mueller investigation. You know, he's blowing the whistle on Trump, everything he knows. And I can't blame him. He's either going to go to jail for a long time, his son's going to go to jail for a long time, or he's got to tell everything he knows about Trump. Whether it's right, wrong, immaterial, this is the way it is in this country. It's every rat for himself when there is an investigation of this nature. The first to get to the prosecutor and make a deal is the one that's going to survive and hopefully stay out of jail or have a very minimal jail sentence. Here's what I want to say about Michael Flynn and his plea and his cooperation with the investigation. Flynn is a nail in the coffin, more so than Manafort at the moment. He is the first nail in the coffin, and you know whose coffin it is. The Senate of the United States, they passed the tax bill early in the morning on Saturday, uh, 
a disgrace from my perspective. I'm sorry. I know a lot of people don't agree with me. Uh, it benefits the rich to the detriment of the poor. I view it from a biblical perspective. I see each of the senators, the senators who voted for this tax bill, as receiving 30 pieces of silver. You heard me, 30 pieces of silver. And from whence did they come? Well, from the large corporations and the wealthy uh, Republican supporters who contribute heavily, heavily, not only to the party, but to our senators, our congressmen, on the Republican side primarily. Why? They're buying their votes. The whole word for the last two weeks has been before this vote. The pressure is coming from the donors on this tax bill. The donors, they wanted that, for example, the, the what is it, the uh, corporate tax, tax rate dropped from 35% to 20%. Dramatic, big numbers, lots of money. That wasn't for you and me. That was for the 1%, okay? So they got their 30 pieces of silver. They did their duty. I wish we could take them in mass and vote them all out. And they throw the Democrats out at the same time. Let's get rid of them all and start all over again with new people, new blood. People who are not politicians to go for the first time. And also, let's have term limits. Never going to happen in the federal uh, legislature. But wouldn't it be great to know they're going to go for four years or five years, and that's it. Then they're going to go home. Okay, Trump. He can't keep his mouth shut. He's got to knock everybody. He's, he makes things up. And this is what's controlling the news. We don't hear about anything else in the world but Trump, Trump, Trump. What did he say this past week about the FBI? He said the FBI, FBI and I quote, is in tatters, 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 tatters. He said, and I quote, worst in history. This FBI is the worst in history. Well, He's a bad guy, Trump. And the FBI is really going after him as part of the Mueller investigation. Uh, and he's knocking them. He's telling the world, don't believe these guys, they're liars. Because Trump believes, as Adolf Hitler did, that if you tell a lie and you tell it frequently enough, the people will believe you. And unfortunately, in this country, people believe what he says. I admired former Attorney General Eric Holder, who sent a return tweet. Uh, and I, he said something. It was right what he said. And here's what Holder said in a return tweet after the FBI statement was made by Trump. He said, the integrity and honesty, the integrity and honesty at the FBI headquarters, all right, is real and not as it is at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Honesty and, t and integrity, in effect, exist in the FBI headquarters. It does not at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Talk about Manafort and Trump for a moment. This Paul Manafort's got to be crazy. Let me tell you, as a lawyer, he has to be crazy. He had such a hard time setting bail properly. The guy's got money, but whether it was going to be $5 million, $10 million, $12 million, because they didn't trust him. They figured the guy's going to skip the country. So they nailed him with a huge bail, astronomical bail. All right, and now he's got, he's got to stay at home, though. He, uh, he's in home confinement with some kind of the machine on his ankle. Uh, better than spending the next year or year and a half in jail awaiting trial. Okay. And one of the conditions of his bail was he was not to communicate with Russians in any way, do any writings, okay? And what did he do? <laughs> He's writing an op-ed with someone uh, in Europe there, a, a Russian or a friend of a Russian's, uh, all tied up with the, with the Ukraine and everything else. And uh, Mueller's calling him on it. Come Monday... Uh, our friend Manafort's going to be in federal court in front of the judge 
because he's violating, Mueller says, the uh, conditions of his bail for his bail. I'll tell you something. If I was the judge, I'd throw him in jail and let him sit on his ass in jail until the trial for the very simple reason that he's arrogant. He's arrogant. He's like Trump and the rest of his crew. These people, rules mean nothing to them. They sit on top of the world. They are untouchable. They do what they want. And Manafort, he could violate a federal court order. Why not? Put his ass in jail to wait trial. Ah, uh, no. The president, my dear president, our dear president. It's developing as a legal defense by some of his attorneys. Let me say this first. Trump has so many lawyers defending him in this matter. Now, I appreciate it's very important what is going on, and he should have the best legal counsel and as many as he wants. But I want you to be aware, and I've talked about this before, and you may not recall or you may not, some of you may not be aware. You know who's paying his legal bills? You and me, tax dollars. Ho, ho, ho. Most of his counsel are being paid with tax dollars because they passed a law of Congress some years ago that provides for this. Not only the president, but his children, Jared, Donald, the daughter, anyone <laughs> who has a federal position gets charged with a crime, it don't come out of their pocket. Most of it comes for the cost of defense comes out of the pocket of the United States government, who is you and me, taxpayers. So he can have as many lawyers as he wants, and he can say as many things as he wants, but the problem is he doesn't have leadership. As I see, he's got at least three, they're all good lawyers, three lawyers running the show. But each, you got to have one, like Mueller leading the team. Here he's got three. They don't agree. So you got three people going three separate ways, representing his interests, and coming up with what they believe are good defense arguments, or the thing should be handled this way, or you keep your mouth shut, which is the wisest thing. Now, one of them came out this week and said, President cannot obstruct justice. Don't why know why they're investigating him for it. It's illegal. They can't. Uh, it's impossible for a president to obstruct justice, okay? Uh, and why? Because he's the president. He is numero uno. He is number one in the law. And if you're number one in the law, he, he can't obstruct it. He's the man. Now, what they don't understand, and I think this is simple, he's not a king. Trump is not a king. None of our presidents are kings. They're not royalty. They're people. We elect them. But if they step out of line, we can call them on it. It's permissible. It is, if they commit a crime, we can call them on it, okay? Uh, no one, never forget this, no one in this country is above the law. And if you take the position that president cannot obstruct justice, then he is above the law. And it's the first time I'm hearing this argument. Nixon talked about it, but not even to the extent we're hearing about it today under Trump. Nixon thought if you were president, anything you did could not be illegal. Well, you saw what happened to Nixon. I am very upset with two United States senators who both happen to be Republicans, and I'm going to talk about them in a very disparaging manner because I think it's deserving, and what I'm going to say fits them perfectly. I'm going to start with Senator Chuck Grassley, Republican of Iowa. Now, Grassley's claim to fame this past week is that he's against the he was against the estate death tax and part of the Senate tax bill eliminates after I don't know how many years in this country the estate uh, uh, tax just eliminates it and uh, he took the position and this is why I'm irritated he took the position that 
those who die leaving large estates recognize, are people who invested in their lifetime. If they had that extra $10, they invested it. And that's why they died rich, most of them billionaires, all right? Well, and they're not like the people who, and I quote, spend every darn penny on booze or women or movies. All the people who don't die rich are those who spend every darn penny on booze or women or movies. Now, I don't know what generation this guy comes from. I mean, it's an insult, but what the hell do movies have to do with this? Uh, And I don't know if we got people who spend all that money on booze anymore. Maybe drugs, but not booze. And women, I don't know. I uh, what was yesterday may not be today. I'm not saying men don't uh, spend money on women, but and there are women who spend money on men. But again, the man's yesterday, so far back, and the reason why is because he has been in the United States Senate for 36 years. 36 years, and for 10 years before that, he was in the state legislature, and also the United States Congress. So as I put it, as I say it, he has spent 46 years sucking on the public tit. You heard me, sucking on the public tit. These guys, they become legislators, and this guy's a a senator for 36 years. They've got all the perks of the position. They've got respect, allegedly. Uh, they they get their salaries paid, they get their hospitalization, they get everything, and they don't have to get up in the morning, you know, and, and go to work digging ditches, driving a truck, working in, in a Walmart or doing something like that. They don't have to worry about money anymore. Once you get elected to the United States Senate and you spend enough time there, you walk away a millionaire or a billionaire. The only senator, in my opinion, who has not accomplished this in the last 30 or 40 years is Joe Biden. He went in poor Joe Biden. He came out poor. Okay? Everyone else comes out a millionaire. You look what what they had when they went in and what they had when they leave. It's amazing. Now, why they make all that money? How'd they make it? This man's been sucking on the public tick tit. I'm sorry, it's the public did. I haven't talked in that way for years, so with these people. And uh, look what he says. He insults you and me, spending every darn penny on booze or women or movies. Then there's Orrin Hatch. I have been an admirer of Orrin Hatch my entire life, Republican from Utah. I thought he was presidential timber way back. Well, it's his time to get out, too. War Orrin Hatch has been in the United States Senate more time than Grassley. He's been in the Senate 40 years, okay? He's the most senior Republican senator in the United States Senate. Uh, Generally, in in the last 10, 15 years, you don't hear much from him. He must share his wisdom with his compatriots in quiet, uh, behind closed doors, but you don't hear about him or from him. In the last couple of weeks, he's been in there fighting for this tax bill. He's been challenging Democratic senators. I can recall he had an exchange with one of them. Uh, you know, he said, Democrats are for the poor, Republicans for the rich. And he got offended, Orrin Hatch. He's a he says, I'm a Republican. And I was born poor and I grew up poor. My parents, I grew up in a low-middle-income household. Well, that's a hell of a lot better than growing up in a poor household, all right? Low middle class, any touch of middle class means you had some kind of money. You know, you had a house. <laughs> you weren't living in an apartment house. Uh, you, had a, you had a lawn. You had a fence. And, oh, and he's fought his whole life for the poor. All of a sudden, he's coming out, and he's in support of this tax bill. And all of a sudden, he's asshole buddies with the President of the United States because yesterday, Warren Hatch and Donald Trump got on <laughs> the presidential plane, it was it US 1, and they flew from Washington to uh, Utah. 
And there was a big deal in Utah yesterday because the president took two million acres of government land, nature's land, land that's been set aside to be preserved for the natural qualities that it has, and he released it. He says, we're not going to keep this land like this. We're going to minimize it. We're not going to take monuments down. It's called monument land. But he says we're going to minimize all the, 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 the mountains and the trees and the fresh air. Why? Because this land's now going to be used for development. One of the big things, you know, out there in Utah is coal. We're going to mine coal in Utah. Now, I don't understand this. The coal industry has been going downhill steadily. West Virginia was an example. Trump gets elected. There's 800 new jobs in West Virginia in the coal business. But coal is yesterday. The industries have gotten away for it. You can't from it. You can't expect corporate America now to change their all, whole means and ways of operating to bring coal in as a source of energy. And I don't know who the hell's going to mine that coal in Utah. Maybe they're going to cut lumber. They can use the lumber. There's also natural gas there. We're getting away from natural gas in this country. Uh, but And there's Orrin Hatch standing with the president in Utah. Thank you, Mr. President. This is a good thing we're doing, et cetera, et cetera. It, I don't know what companies are going to develop. And those that do, if it's going to work out for them. But I knew, do know this. We're taking the natural richness of our country as it is located in parts of Utah, and we're going to tear it apart. Abraham Lincoln. I feel, I believe, that Lincoln was one of the best presidents, if not the best president, when it came to words. He had a play with words. He had such an easy way of expressing himself. So he hit you right between the eyes with a sentence. So I want to go over a couple of things he said. In 1858, Lincoln was running for the United States Senate for, for, for the state of Illinois against Stephen Douglas. Lincoln lost. This is two years before he was elected president. He lost. Douglas beat him. But in the debate during that campaign, he said, and I quote, a house divided against itself cannot stand. A house divided against itself cannot stand. Well, let me tell you, we are, I have never seen this country so divided in my 82 years as it is today. Perhaps as bad as it was uh, prior to the Civil War, when the big deal was new states, are they going to be slave, slave states or free states? Where are the balance of power is going to be? So much so are we divided that I worry, I, and I've said this before and I've said it in writing and on shows, I worry whether we can survive as a nation. Okay? Now, and I also believe Gettysburg Address words, uh, you know, by the people, for the people, of the people, by the people, for the people shall survive. I see that going because it's the rich who run this country. They influence the Congress. Then in 1862, in his State of the Union address, he said, we shall nobly save or meanly lose the last best hope on earth. We shall nobly save or meanly lose the last best hope on earth. We are the last best hope. We're going down the tubes unless we straighten things out. I hope we do. That is the show for this week. Thank you for joining me. Hope you enjoyed. Watch my video, Key West Lou Live, every day, three or four minutes where I rabble rouse about whatever moves me. My book has been published. It's out there, available for purchase. Irma and me, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo Books. Thank you again for joining me. I look forward to being with you again next week. There is more to me, Queen Eliara of Elfgard, than my elven magic. Just as there's more to Geico than saving you money, Geico also gives you 24-7 access to licensed agents online, on the phone, or on the Geico app. And while I am a mighty elf queen, I am also a mighty big fan of barbecue potato chips. Minions! 
more smoky mesquite. Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. You've reached the Holiday Helpline. We turn the holidays into Holliers. Hi. I want to surprise my wife and kids with some super stylish gifts. Surprise! With all the velvet and sparkly styles you'll find at Old Navy, it's your time to shine. Old Navy? Yep. The entire store is up to 60% off right now. Up to 60% off? And women's dresses start at just 15 bucks, 12 for girls, with tops from 6 bucks for adults, 5 for kids at Old Navy and OldNavy.com. No surprise here. I'm going to Old Navy. Turn your holiday into a Hollier. Get to Old Navy today. Valid 12-6 to 12-12. Excludes in-store clearance, gift cards, register lane items today only, and two-day only deals.